in today's video we're going to make this stylized rough bark and I promise it's the last wood we're gonna make for a while but you know I never made a bark from scratch in substance I've always used Photoshop so I thought I'd have a go at it and I'm pretty pleased with this as a first result so I thought I'd share uh, before we actually get into making it though, uh, I'm doing a couple of things a little bit different here with my renderer. So we'll get all get on the same page with that here. I'm using a cylinder for my shape just because it looks cooler. Uh, my default materials, I have my scale set to 1 as far as the height is concerned. And then the other thing that I'm doing here different is the exposure I've set to 1. By default it's 0 and that's just kind of dark. Um, and since we are dealing with a dark material here, I just set that up. So let's get to building our bark. I'm going to make a new substance and we'll call it bark. And we're going to use the PBR template. And we're not going to be using metallic. So we'll change that to a specular level. And I'm also going to move my height next to my normal because that's where I like it. And we're also going to add an ambient occlusion. And I'm going to put that up here. Right. And finally, we're going to click View Outputs in 3D View because we've added those two nodes. And immediately, because our AO is set to black, it's got no color in it, we lost everything. So there's a temporary measure. I'm just going to create this grayscale and we'll make it white. And this will let us see all our other outputs. All right. So this is going to be a series of masks. And we're going to deal with the height first because that's kind of the key feature of this bark is that you know those those ribs that go vertically and to do that we are going to use a tile generator and the settings that I used for my X and my Y here um, I mean you can do it different but the key point is that the Y is 1. I had the, the X set to 9. And that's just going to determine how wide these ribs are overall. And I'm not going to create an input parameter for this, but if you want to, you can. You know, in fact, any of these nodes, if you want to make them adjustable, you can. Um, I'm not actually doing any input parameters for this material at all. It's just a straight up material. But what we do need to change here is the pattern input. And I fooled around with the with the shapes that, that come in here and none of them really worked. You're welcome to fool around with it. I mean the pyramid sort of worked but not really because it's still it was still very straight on the sides no matter what I did to it later on with warps. So I ended up creating an image input here with the SVG. So that's a vector graphic we're going to create. And we're just going to create a new one. You can also import a vector, a vector graphic. And we'll just call this shape. And that, we can keep it small, that's fine. And this node has a variety of instructions here on the side. We have our colors, so this is our foreground background. We can also set it to be showing an alpha or not. I have a pen tool, which I'm going to click on right now. And it's really hard to see, but it's ma it is making a line. and this will create a shape for me. I'm going to kill that because that's not what we need. We can also 
use these pre-made shapes in here. If I want to do that, then I have to actually use the this tool here will allow me to change the handles or move points around. And up here, you know, I can so I can start with a shape and then manipulate it. Or with the pen tool, I can make one from scratch, either with the path like we just did, or with the free hand, which honestly I, I never use because you're still you're just drawing. Um and if I'm going to be doing that, chances are I'm doing it in Photoshop where I have a lot more control over it. But you can do that here. It just gives you like a bajillion little points. And normally if I'm using this node, it's something that I'm doing on the fly. I don't really need like super detailed images. And I'm usually just blocking out shapes. So let's use the path tool to create something that's going to give us sort of a basic shape for those up and down striations that we see on a piece of rough bark. So it's basically going in and out. And it's basically vertical. And I'm going to give myself a black background here. And I'm going to turn this into a grayscale output. Now, as it stands, this is like a really ugly, ugly edge. But it's, it's a basic shape. And now I can start doing things to it. First thing I'm going to do is get a bevels node. And in my notes, I had the bevel set to negative 0.21 as far as the distance. But again, you can do whatever you want. I'm trying to get, that's pretty good. Um, I'm trying to get like this ridge effect here. So this is going to, we're going to be making our height map from here. So we've got these ridgy ridges now. And it's these little ridgy ridges that we're going to start feeding into our tile generator. So let's connect these two and see what happens. Well, it's a start, but we're still going to have to do some things to our tile generator in order to make it start looking like what we wanted to. Let's come down to the interstice sizes and fix those up. For my X, I started with negative 1.98, and for my Y, I started with negative 0.7. Oh, sorry, negative 0.07. Let's see what that gives us. Because obviously we're, de we're dealing with different shapes here. I think it's okay for now. Um, let's see what happens when we do the rest of it. We're going to randomize the scale somewhat because we don't want them all the same size. But we do want them pretty close to each other. And again, this number, you can, you know, as, as this number goes up, their sizes vary more and more. And finally, we're going to randomize their positions. We're going to leave the X alone because we kind of want them lined up like this. But on the Y, I had it set at 0.94. So we're, we're really randomizing them all up and down on the Y. Uh, there's, I mean, this is, this is a start, but there's a couple of things we still need to do to this. Um, these spaces are very wide in between the two. Uh, when I was testing this material, it turned out to give me better results rather than trying to widen this up and therefore start because the minute we start to widen this bevel up that pointed ridge is going to go away and we start getting these flat tops and I don't want that so what I'm going to do instead is we're going to get a transform 2D node and we're going to overlay this on top of each other and we'll just move one of them around and we're going to use a light and blend and then I can come into this transform 2D and just get something that I'm happier with and I'm going to do that a second time now because I'm it's getting there but I, I'm, I want a little bit more in through here 
So we'll do this exactly the same idea. Oops, I want this one. I'm going to transform and we're going to get another blend and we'll use a lighten. That's better. So we're getting, you know, it's starting to look like the flow of bark. You know, I just want to see what happens if I drop this down a little bit by one. I think I like that better. But we still need two of those. Yeah, okay, I think that's enough for now. But here's the thing. Right now, this is all like really even as far as the height goes. So we, we have these vertical stripes, but they're super uniform. And that's, that's kind of not working for me. So I'm going to kind of move back into this area here. And we're going to do a couple of things in between this bevel we've created and the tile generator. I'm going to go into the library and I'm going to get a gradient. Um, I want this one. And I'm going to get a levels node. And I'm going to get a blend. And I'm going to multiply these two. And this will begin to vary the image. So it, it's instead of having these really straight up and down lines, we begin to see some variation in their heights rather than having them all be the, exactly the same. Now I want to vary this a little bit more and I'm going to do that by getting a second blend node. We're going to do, I, I should have done it the other way, this levels node. Real, you know, let, let's leave this one as is because I like that one and we'll use the levels in here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to make it a little bit different as far as the the gradient is concerned. So we kind of have two different versions of the same thing. In fact, I think I'm just going to use a different gradient altogether. Let me get rid of this. Let's get one of these guys that kind of goes from end to end. So it'll it'll be higher at the top and then fade out at both sides, whereas this one goes up in one direction. Yeah. And now I'm going to come into my tile generator. And here in my pattern input number, I'm going to put 2. And while we're at it, let's stick a transform 2D in here. And we can do a little freeform stretching out and smushing of things so that these two start looking like two different shapes. Made a little bit wider. And in fact, let's turn it 180. So we have now, you know, shape one and then shape two. So they're kind of different. Oh, I'm noticing a problem here. This transform 2D, it's tiling this right here. You can see at the bottom edge here. So I'm going to come into tiling mode and make this absolute with no tiling. And that'll just get rid of that artifact. And I think that's pretty good. And then we're going to have to come back in here and fool around with these offsets because our shapes are different. So I, at, in here, what I'm trying to do is get rid of these big black areas. I want to have it, you know, it look like it's all covered more or less evenly. And that's probably about as good as it's going to get. But I think that's okay. It's it's looking more like, you know, a natural piece of bark. I think maybe this is a little a little harsh as far as its pointiness in here. I want to flatten it out a little bit. I'm going to get a levels note in here. And let's tone that down a bit. Give it a flatter top. So we see more of these. Yeah, that's kind of an undulating but at the same time very vertical noise and I'm going to make sure it's tiling correctly which it is and I did that by hitting the spacebar but this isn't going to be our final height map 
we're going to need to do a couple of things to it first. And again, this is something that I figured out while testing this. I found I got a much better jaggedness and sort of roughness to it if I created a normal first and then started warping the normal rather than warping this grayscale before I put it into the normal. I don't know why. It just it just gave me crisper edges. Um, it worked better. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this height map, we're going to turn it into a normal, and then ultimately we're going to go backwards and do a normal to height. And in between we're going to do a couple of other things. But this is this is the basic setup. And you'll see that it's giving me a very different kind of height map. And it's really the one I want. And I couldn't get it to work nearly as well as a grayscale as I could by just doing this. And what we need to do in here is kind of mess this up a little bit. And we're going to make another noise. And again, it's going to be a vertically oriented noise. And to do that, I'm going to use this anisotropic noise. And we're going to get a transform 2D, which we will rotate by 90 degrees so it matches. And the other thing I want to do is I want to make these stripes really much bigger. So I'm going to up the width by 400%. Uh, again, you know, whatever number makes you happy. But this is something we're going to be warping against um, other stuff. So we don't really need to worry too much about tiling. So you just make the shape look like you want it to look. And I'm going to put a levels node in here and just get rid of some of those edges there. So I've got this vertically oriented, these vertically oriented stripes here. I think I'll do it this way instead. And I'm going to go back into my library. And I'm going to get a fractal sum 4. And we're going to get a warp node. And we're going to warp these lines against that fractal sum. And I had it set at 0.05. Let's see how that works here. Yeah. We're, we're taking those straight lines and we're getting them jagged. And now we're going to take those jaggedy lines and we're going to run them through a directional warp. And this time I'm going to use a purling noise. I know I'm going to want this reset because I don't want them nearly that small. So we're going to set this down probably to something like that. And in my notes I had this set at 20. I want it pretty crazy. Yeah, something like that. So we're starting to take these stripes and we're, we're this is going to be like an underlying noise in our bark. And I'm going to get another transform 2D node, and now I'm going to make it skinny again. Again, I, I think I want to um, overlay these two on each other to kind of thicken it out a little bit. So I'm going to get another transform 2D. We're going to run it through there, and then we're going to blend the two of these together using a light and blend. And let's roughen them up a little bit more by running it through this one again. So, you know, it's looking less like 1960s squiggles and more like some bark that's a little bit, you know, like the semi-rough areas of the bark. That's okay. I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. And now we can come back into this normal map that we have and warp it by this new noise that we made. So we, we've got this underlying directionality going on here. We've got the warp that's also horizontal and everything is moving more or less in the same direction. And before I put it back into this height, let's get a blur. Wrong blur. 
and we're just going to soften it up a little bit. And this is starting to look a little bit more like wood because those horizontals are giving us, you know, the, the, these chips that are starting to come out of this very smooth shape in here. I mean, it's got the bevel we want, but its sides are very smooth, and we're starting to rough those up a little bit. In fact, I want to see whether we can't fine-tune this a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to even out these spaces in here so I don't have like blobs. If I have a long black one, that's okay. But I, I'm just trying to sort of even this up a bit. And again, you you know, you can you can fool around with this. You can even add if you want it even closer together. You can add another round of this kind of business in here too. It, it this is really a matter of of taste. So we've got these two very vertical masks, and the final thing that I want to build is something that's a little bit more horizontal, but you know, obviously not perfectly horizontal. And in the library, I found Fur Three. Oddly enough, I thought was you know seemed to be working for me. Um, let's get a transform 2D. First of all, I'm gonna turn it 180 because I, I wanted to go in this direction. And then let's make it skinnier. So we now have this series of, of basically half, you know, like loop-de-loops going on in the horizontal. So, you know, it's a horizontal movement, but it, it's not perfectly so. And now we just need to get it to look less like fur. So I'm going to get a levels node in here, and we're just going to ramp this up. And let's get another transform 2D node and a blend, which we'll use with a lightened blend. And we can now offset this guy to make it look more like cracks in wood. So this kind of starts to give you know a cracks in wood effect as opposed to a fur effect. And I'm going to also get a blur, a high quality blur. And we'll tone that down ever so slightly so they're not completely jaggedy jagged. And finally, let's invert the grayscale so that we're talking cracks, because if we're making cracks from a height perspective, they're going to be, you know, the, the cracks themselves are black on a, on a white background. So this is our horizontal, you know, the basic bit of our horizontal mask. And now it's just a question of messing it up a bit with some warps. And I'm going to get this fractal here. And we can get another warp and see what happens when we apply this one to it. So not quite so even. It, these warps are making it look a little bit less mechanical. And we can get another levels node. And I'm going to actually want a second one of these down here. We'll leave it alone for the for the moment. No, actually I'm gonna do it off of this one. Um we're gonna we're gonna need a stronger version of, of this. This lighter version we're going to be using for the color, but I want to work on the deeper version, which is going to be for a bevel. And let's get a bevel node and an invert grayscale. And I had the distance set at 0 0.005. See what 0 0.01 looks like. Nope, I prefer 0 0.005. 
So it's it's giving it a bit of a bevel. It's not giving it, you know, it's not this straight up edge here. If you want it really sharp, you can just get, you, you don't have to do the bevel, but what it's doing, I we're we're going to be using this normal. So it's creating a normal that's uh, going along this. If you wanted to do it without the bevel, you could either just get a normal from up here or a height or a height to normal from the library and make a do it yourself normal. It, it would work either way. So let's get a blend node. And we have our cracks and our sort of vertical noise here. And I want my cracks on the highest part and my vertical noise to be sort of in the in the deeper grooves. Should try hooking up the normal. But I I, I want these actually cut out because I'm gonna use this height mask as the actual mask for here. And what it's gonna do is it because it's you know it's got gradations in there, it is blending them. So these things are fading in and out, which is exactly what I want. And then I'm going to get a second blend and we have this normal here which is dealing only with our heights and this one we will overlay. And let's take a look and see how that works. I mean it's super shiny um, but it is giving the effect of being a bark. I mean we've got plenty of work to do here. Uh, it might actually be easier if we put white in here and create an ambient occlusion because it'll give us an you know it'll give us the ability to see how those shadows are working. And we'll set that down. And let's get that more gray. It's actually not looking too bad. I think I'd like to see more of that underlying vertical noise. So we are going to mess around with this mask in here. Rather than going with the gradations here, I'm going to put stick a levels node in here and we can tighten that mask up a little bit. Yeah, we, we, we can change it a little bit later, but I'm liking that better. So, we, you know, we're kind of going half and half with the, with the sort of surface textures. But yeah, I think we're ready to tidy this up and start working on the rest of our outputs. So I'll put a frame around this and call this horizontal cracks. I'll just call it horizontal. And these two guys are verticals. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to call this. Uh, I'm just going to draw a frame around it so that we can move it around. Because it's all just jumbled up in there. So we'll put the height in here and this way kind of sort of makes sense. And our AO we're going to work on a little bit more. I'm just trying to get some room in here because it's starting to sprawl. Now we've got a little room to get this AO squared away. So I want to, we, we have an ambient occlusion right now for like the height height. Um, and I don't want this any busier as far as the height is concerned. So I do want to split this up into two maps. Let's get another AO in here. And we're also going to get a normal to height. Because I kind of want to repeat with the ambient occlusion what we did here with the normal. So we blended the two busier normals here and here. So this is our blended busy normals. And I'm going to turn these into height. And then I'm going to run it into my ambient occlusion. And we'll set this way down. And now we can blend it on top of the one that we originally made.
I'm going to go with darken. And this is going to start picking up. Actually, you know what? I think maybe I do want multiply. Yeah, I want multiply. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty good at that. All right. So now we can draw a frame around this and call it our ambient occlusion. I'm going to save the color for last because it's the most complicated. So we now have our roughness. And again, we're repeating the same idea except here again I want to invert this because by and large the, the higher elements are going to be the shinier because they're, they get rubbed on more. And we will take this normal to height right here and we'll invert it. And then this height will also invert. And again, get a couple of levels nodes so that we can actually adjust these results. But I'm just working on the assumptions that the higher areas, whatever sort of great scale we end up with here, the higher areas are always going to be just a little bit rougher. I mean, are going to be just a little bit rougher than the lower areas. This is actually inverted, so I should have been talking about this one up here. But you get what I'm talking about. And then we're going to get a blend node. And this time I'm going to use a light and blend. And we're going to want to use this height map here. I'm debating which one to use. Um, I think I'm going to use the one that, that goes exactly with the normals. So we'll use that one this time. And let's plug this into our roughness. And we can fine tune it now using those levels nodes. I just realized that these are actually. I, I like it that way. I'm going to leave it. Trying to find a spot where I can see the, the reflectivity, but it's kind of hard here. Because I know that that's too dark. It's kind of hard to see. But overall, I, I, I like the effect. Obviously, we can always come back and fine tune those. Um, and the specular level. We can kind of do the same thing, only this time we can just do it straight off of here with a couple of levels notes. We'll do one for the overlay, one for the height, and we'll use this again as our mask. You know, actually, I think I do want it a little bit lighter. And then this one will just get really dark. Because exactly none of this should be terribly specular. Yeah, I think that's all right. So now we're ready to do the color. And for that, we're going to use a gradient map. Actually, let's get these framed off first. We're going to use a really simple gradient. Um, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different ways to use the to do this. Um, I just found it's for me it seemed to work better if I just had something really simple because it's hard enough as it is. 
because there's a lot going on in here. So I'll start with something like this and we'll see how that works for us. And let's hook up just to make sure my normal to height into this color because I don't want this height information in there because this has got you know it's got to do with ambient occlusion but not really with color and let's plug that in here and see what's going on yeah you know I originally did these these stripy things as cracks. I kind of like them coming out. I mean, we can let's just test it. This uh, invert grayscale, we can always turn it on and off. Yeah, you know, I like them coming out. I think I know I like it both ways, honestly, but I think I want it this way. So let's adjust the colors for that. I don't want to add too many points. I'm trying to find where these stripes are. I'll make a bracket here and I'm going to move it around. Put this one back up here and I think we're going to get rid of this one altogether. Maybe not. It's still too light though. Yeah, I think that's okay for now. Um, I get terribly obsessed with these things. And I'm going to get a blend node. And I'm going to take this ambient occlusion. And for the moment, I'll just keep it, you know, in black and white. It does change it to color, so it allows me to blend these two. And I'm going to multiply this. And that's going to accentuate those darker, I mean, the deeper areas. And we can get a levels node in here. So let's get the levels node in here. It's easier. And we can adjust that a little bit. A little too much. So let's make a frame around our color. that and that's it we're pretty much done um obviously you can you can tweak it how you want it but I, I think this is not too bad it's you know it's got a little bit of a of a sort of reflective thing with the specularity going on but for the most part it's a pretty rough surface and if you wanted to you could tweak it to get it even rougher but I, I this is kind of nice stylized bark kind of halfway between cartoon and not cartoon and you can take it in either direction um, so I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.